What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to round off edges with a couple of the different tools contained inside of Fusion 360. So specifically, we're gonna talk about how to use the fillet and chamfer tools inside of Fusion 360 to make changes to your edges. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one of the things that's gonna be important when working in 3D models is understanding the difference between these regular models like this and models that more mirror things in real life. So one of the big differences between 3D models and real life objects is a lot of the time your objects inside of your 3D models don't look very realistic. And part of the reason for that is because in real life there's actually no, not really such a thing as a sharp edge. Like maybe if you were modeling like a wall where that comes together, but even then um, in real life these edges are usually kind of rounded off or angled off there aren't really sharp edges in the real world. And so what I wanna do is talk through a couple of the tools that are contained inside of Fusion 360 in order to round off or strike off these edges. So uh, this is gonna be the first tutorial where we've really talked about the modify tools rather than the create tools. So these are shapes that I've already created using fairly simple extrusions, but I wanna use them to demonstrate these two functions. So there's two functions contained inside of Fusion 360 for working with your edges. So the first, is the fillet tool. So if you mouse over this, you can see how this tells you that basically what the fillet tool does is it rounds off your edges. So it takes your edges and it applies kind of a curved shape to them so that they look like they've been rounded off a little bit. So the second tool contained inside Fusion 360 for this is the chamfer tool. And what the chamfer tool is going to do is that's going to bevel off your edges rather than rounding them. So almost as if, uh, imagine like if you're working with a pocket knife and you were uh, carving the edge off of a piece of wood and you just took like a single slice off of the corner, that's kind of what the chamfer tool does is that just strikes this off based on an angle that you dictate. So let's start by taking a look at the fillet tool. So the way the fillet tool is gonna work is that's gonna be located, for me, it's by default already in this toolbar. If you don't see it, you can click on modify and it should be like the second thing on here. And you can see how it has a keyboard shortcut of F as well, so if you wanna activate that you can tap the F key. But the way that's gonna work is you're gonna activate that tool and you're gonna select different edges that you want rounded off. So for example, if I was to click on this plus button right here and then click on an edge, you can see how this gives me an arrow. And what the arrow indicates is the arrow indicates that I can now dictate how this edge is rounded off. So you can either click and drag this in order to set the distance that you would like to fill at this edge, or you can type in a value. So let's say I wanted this to be five millimeters or something like that, you could type in a value in order to round that off. And so if you look at this, you can see how this took this singular edge and it basically added a curve along here and struck off the additional material. So that's how this works if you have an individual edge. However, you can also select multiple different edges so for example, you can see how I can add these two edges in here and then click and drag this. You can see how you can drag this to a certain point after which this kind of jumps around on you a little bit. You don't necessarily want that, but you can see how you can click and drag this to make this into almost a curve. So as long as you don't drag this too far, you can uh, basically set this however you want and these curves will kind of interact with each other. So, and then not only does this work with individual edges like this, you can also select faces. So let's say for example that I was to select, we'll start with two of these faces. So I'm gonna clear this, and then I'm just gonna select this face, in this face, and we'll just click and drag this. You can see how what this is doing is this is taking all of the edges around your selected faces and it's rounding them off. So you can use this to really quickly select uh, multiple different edges and round them off really quickly. So you could also select the whole thing. So we could just drag a box around this and we could just round off every single edge in this object if we wanted to do that. So, and there are a couple different options in here for ways that you can modify the way that this rounds off these curves. So, for example, um, this corner 
right? If we were to select all three of these edges and then move this in, this is gonna create a corner that's kind of a rounded off ball shape. And this is basically trying the best that it can to make a rounded corner based on the way these three edges interact. Well, there's a different way under corner type you can set this to be a setback. So if you set this to be a setback, you can see how this creates a different kind of corner where instead of rounding these off like a ball, instead it kind of extrudes them out a little bit and then creates this uniform shape along the corner as well. So you can adjust the way that that corner is created in here using this tool as well. So another fun feature that's in here is you can also the, the way that this works by default is this just rounds off an edge based on a uniform radius on both sides. So it's rounding this off based on a 3.73 millimeter radius. However, if you were to select the drop down here and you were to click on variable radius, this would then give you two arrows. And what you can do is you can set a different radius on each corner. So you can see how on this corner, for example, I could go ahead and I could set this to be a much larger radius. And then this one, a much smaller radius. And this would simulate the transition between your larger and smaller radius using this tool. And then once you're done, you can just click OK. And you can see how this applies that change to this body. And so where this is going to get really interesting and really important is not only does this work for rounding off objects, it also works for creating transitions between objects. So like for example, if I had this box right here, not only could I strike off these edges and remove material, so for these two, we'll select both of these, we'll go back to a constant radius. And we'll just deselect all of these and we'll just set them all to a constant radius. But I could select these two edges and round them off. And you can see how this is removing material. Well, you can also select another edge. So we'll click OK, then we'll run this again. You could also select this edge and you can see how the area faces outward. And this is actually adding material rather than removing it. So you can see how this is rounding off this edge based on a radius right here, but the radius is moving material outward and adding material. So you can use this to create great transitions between different shapes. So, and this would work for a situation like this one as well. So let's say that you had two pieces of metal on top of each other and you wanted to create a rounded transition. You could use the fillet function in order to create that rounded transition. So um, I use this in my Christmas ornament example model, which I will try to remember to link to in the notes down below to create a rounded transition between um, the sphere that made up the ornament and the cap that goes on the top. So you can use this to round off this transition and to make these look more natural. So, and you could also do this, like let's say we wanted to round off the transition between this curve or between this object and this object, we would just do the same thing or we would select this function, we would drag this out and you can see how you can create a nice rounded transition in here. So, and you could do this for multiple different edges as well. So let's say we wanted all four of these edges and you could also, uh, you could also do this by doing it on one side and then mirroring it. But let's say we wanted to round off all of these at once. You can see how you can select all of those edges and set this without having to do a whole bunch of extra work to create that nice transition. So in general, that's how we're gonna fillet edges. We also have the ability to chamfer edges. And so when we chamfer edges, what that's gonna do is that's gonna strike off material to make a bevel. So um, you can find this tool by clicking on modify and chamfer. And then it's gonna ask you to select edges. So in this case, I'm gonna select this one edge and I'm just gonna click and drag this down and you can see how this one is chamfering this off at a 45 degree angle. So it's striking that material off, but it's creating an angled face as opposed to a round face. So, and you can also set this by distance. So if you wanted this to go lower, or higher, you can set both the up and down distance as well as the left and right distance, or you can also set it by angle. So you could set a distance and then set the angle from which you wanna strike off that material. So, and it works the same way where if you want to create an angled edge in here, 
you can do that in exactly the same way that we can with the round tool. So we could just set this to be an equal distance and we can adjust this in order to do that. So this gives you a lot of different options for different transitions and other things that you can create inside of Fusion 360. It's just a really fast way to get in here and make these changes. It's very simple to use and these are very simple to add. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Hope you, hopefully you have a better idea of the differences between these two tools, kind of when you would use them and how they work. Um, leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. If you liked this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.